May I speak in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, good morning, St. Margaret's. It is so good to be gathered on this All Saints Sunday. Uh, this is one of my favorite Sundays of the year. It is precious to me, and it is a joy to be with you in the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, I'm going to get into history a little bit this morning. I'm going to talk about how once upon a time, uh, as I'm sure most of us will probably recall, uh, the Feast of All Saints went by a different name. We called it the Feast of All Hallows. This, of course, is where we get the word all, or rather, the word Halloween, which is simply a contraction of All Hallows Eve the night before All Saints. You know, even though that word hallow is so very beautiful, as the years have passed, it's fallen gradually out of use. And now it just kind of pops up in our common culture for just a few seemingly random reasons. For example, author J.K. Rowling, you know, famously used uh, hallow in the title of her final Harry Potter novel, Harry Potter and the deathly hallows. Likewise, children, American children, have traditionally, I don't know if they do this anymore, uh, but traditionally children have learned that hallow can be used as a verb whenever they memorize and they recite Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. Finally, and most memorably, at least for us, right, we use the word hallow or a form of the word hallow each and every Sunday when we recite together the prayer given to us by our Lord, when we ask that God's name be hallowed, hallowed. I spent a bit of time this, this week, you know, uh, Halloween was this week, obviously, and I spent a bit of time thinking about that word, hallow. And as I did so, I realized, or I, 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 I dwelt upon the fact that, that, that our culture's abandonment of the word hallow, is, it's actually a loss for us. It's actually something for us even to lament. To explain what I mean, though, I, I want to start off with a, a very brief summary of what the word simply means, right? You know, as I alluded to a, mo a moment ago, a uh, hallow can be both a, a noun as well as a verb. Um, as a noun refers, you know, notwithstanding Harry Potter, uh, it typically refers to a person, what we normally call a saint. A hallow is a member, whether known or unknown, of that great cloud of witnesses that we are honoring and remembering this morning. You know, hallow, to, to, to make holy, to, to, to set something apart. When it's a noun, it means that that person is set apart. That person is, in a very unique way, pointing us to the power of God's saving Redeeming grace. Unsurprisingly, as a verb, to hallow is to make something holy, to make something sacred. We do this. We hallow, again, by, by setting it apart, by demarcating it. Now, to hallow something, if you are fond of the Gettysburg Address, you'll know to hallow something requires intention on our parts. In order to, to hallow, you have to have a sense of place. You have to grasp the relationship between where it is you are and what it is you are seeking to do. With this in mind, I think we can all understand why, as a people, as a culture, we don't really use the word hallow much anymore. And our cult culture doesn't know what to do with anything I've just described, right? We, we live so much of our lives in a digital world. And living in a digital world, we struggle with a sense of place. You know, where are we? And so we don't think much as a culture about how we might make our world more sacred. I mean, the Internet's a lot of things, but the Internet is not sacred. Or at least, very rarely it is. In terms of people, our culture doesn't seem to care much for holiness. 
For example, you know, we don't value heroes today so much as we value celebrity today. I mean, we rarely honor the people that exemplify those virtues we long for in the deepest places of our hearts, but are just a little bit out of our reach. No, these days we love those prominent figures in our culture who remind us of ourselves. We love it when celebrities are just like us. It's funny, one of the great paradoxes of our culture in this moment is that we, we love to think of ourselves as being so unique. And yet the reality is this, we are settling into a rather bland uniformity. Where not much is sacred and few among us are holy. All this taken together, I think, as I just said, I think it amounts to something of a cultural loss on our parts. And it's for that reason that I am grateful for All Saints Sunday. I feel like All Saints Sunday feels a little bit like an act of defiance. Now, All Saints is a reminder that genuine, authentic holiness remains a strange and wondrous and powerful thing. Holiness is something that each and every follower of Jesus Christ is called to pursue daily, however imperfectly. All saints as well, today, it's, um, it's a reminder that God's grace, it's far more dynamic, far more transformative than we so often realize. I mean, the reason why the church throughout the ages has declared a few among us to be remembered and lauded as saints, to be remembered and lauded as, as hallows. It's because of God and God's ability to profoundly shape and reshape the human heart. I mean, after all, it's God who stirs the soul. It's God who redeems and restores. It's, it's God who's with us when we're at our lowest. And God does these things. God gives us even the hallows themselves all for our life, all for our encouragement. And we, we remember the saints in order that we might trust that that same Spirit who worked miracles in the hearts of those who have gone before, that same Spirit wishes to do something similar in us. It's here that I'm reminded of words from Pope Benedict, who once remarked that the best evidence for Christianity is found in her art and in her saints. Each and every saint has a story. And what all these stories have in common is that they point us to God's capacity to use the most ordinary things in the world, the most ordinary people in the world, to create something wondrous, to create something beautiful. And that's good news. I mean, in the end, I think All Saints Sunday is really about good news. Uh, because otherwise, you know, so much of, of the Christian life would simply seem to be impossible. You know, take just by way of example our gospel passage this morning. You know, by tradition, we listen to the Beatitudes, I think two out of the three years. We, we listen to the Beatitudes on All Saints Sunday. And if it were not for the fact that the words are so familiar to us, I think that they would actually prove to be a bit discouraging to us. I mean, let's be honest, Jesus' words are really difficult. They're challenging. It's human instinct to resist persecution and hardship. It's human instinct to hoard instead of give, to curse instead of bless. It's human instinct. It's our kind of default setting to be a sinner instead of a saint. To go with the flow as opposed to against it. And whenever we're tempted to think of the Beatitudes as a recipe to follow instead of a, a kingdom to step into, all we're doing is setting us, ourselves up for disappointment and failure. 
listen to me this morning. The Beatitudes, they're not about trying harder. They're not a benchmark. They're an image. They're a snapshot. They're a picture of God's upside-down kingdom. More than anything else, they're a world we're invited to step into. My brothers and sisters, uh, the grace I've been trying to talk to or talk about this morning, uh, the grace that's present in the hearts of the saints, the blessing, the blessing they received from God and are receiving even now from God. These things, they're not things for us to earn. They're things for us to seek, to thirst after, to hunger after. They're things to receive with open hands. Even if at first it means we have to let go of all the false idols, our culture never stops exulting. So yes, this image of the kingdom that Jesus paints for us this morning, the Beatitudes, it does exceed the ordinary. It surpasses the best of human efforts. And yet the good news for us this morning is that it's still ours for the taking. Because to be a follower of Jesus means to be on a daily journey. One step in front of the other. And it's a journey that God is leading us on. And it ends at a heavenly banquet, the marriage supper of the Lamb. And before we even take a step, it's a journey that Christ walked on our behalf for our sake. Walking even to death on a cross. The full measure of his devotion to us. And something else that All Saints teaches us is that that journey, however imperfect, however halting it it, it might be, it's one that we never make by ourselves. I mean, we do this journey together. We are together this morning. You know, as a a parish community, as St. Margaret's, we, we break bread together. We serve together, we baptize together, we welcome together, we say goodbye together. And this Christian journey that we're on, this Christian journey that we we make uh, as St. Margaret's, it's it's more than just St. Margaret's. Again, one of the great gifts of this morning, All Saints Sunday, is that it's a terrific reminder of the mystic bonds that connect us with each and every follower of Jesus Christ throughout all the ages. Brothers and sisters, we are not alone. We are not alone. The Christian faith is not some abstract, theoretical thing, but rather a living, breathing, ever-changing story filled with countless chapters of those who have gone before and yet are still with us. These saints, these men and women of faith, these apostles and martyrs, these confessors and evangelists, these individuals who experienced in profound ways the goodness and the grace and the mercy of God, they're meant to inspire us. They're meant to to challenge us. And they're, they're meant to remind us of the particularity of God's love. Just as God was with the saints, so too God is with us. God is with us in the, the, the messy and the, the, the difficult, the uncertain, the painful details of our lives. God is with us in the missteps and the failures. God is with us in the triumphs and the victories. God is with us and God forgives us. God is with us and God redeems us. God is with us and God loves us so very much. And God never gives up on us, imperfect saints as we might be, until that day comes, the day that we long for in our hearts when God at last will wipe away every tear. And so kind of my final encouragement to you this morning is this. Um, 
on this All Saints Day, in this coming week, um, I want you to remember uh, that there is more to our world than meets the eye. Remember that there is more to our world than what we touch and taste, what we see and what we hear. Remember also in the words of William Faulkner that the past is never dead, it's not even past. We are not alone. We are all members of Christ's body. We are joined forever with those who have gone before us in faith, hope, and love. And that same power that raised Christ from the dead that inspired countless men and women to pick up their crosses and to follow after Jesus. That same power is now at work in us. It's available to us if we seek it. We're not always going to feel it. We might even doubt it at times, but it's there and it will always be there. It's with us in this very moment. to God's great glory, and for our great hope. Amen.